Good evening, my fellow scientists. It is Sunday, March 18th, 2018, and I want to talk a little more about the iron battery. For those of you who are new here, for the last year I have been trying to build an all iron cell, that is to say an iron anode and an iron salt cathode that can store renewable energy cheaply and efficiently and be both charged and discharged uh, in, a, in a safe and reproducible manner. I'm afraid I don't have a lot of progress to report this week. I spent a long time trying to get solutions to dissolve in sugar today. Uh, in retrospect, there were some better ways to go about it, but uh, hindsight is always 2020. Iron, of course, is one of the most large scale manufactured products in the world. I mean, we just make, as a, as a world, we make a lot of iron. So it makes some sense to go after that as a battery material if you want to have big batteries. And I suspect that the world is going to need big batteries in the future. And so I'm working toward making a sort of open source DIY battery as a first step. The best battery chemistry I've got so far has been an iron anode, iron metal, and iron three complex with sucrose, strangely enough. Sucrose seems to be a happy medium it helps keep iron in solution up to about 5% at least by weight, which is really good so far. But it does not seem to rapidly corrode the iron metal, which is not the case for other complexing agents like EDTA. EDTA uh, does put a lot of iron into solution, but also eats the iron anode pretty rapidly, so less than ideal. There are other sugars, not just sucrose. We could try, we could try uh, fructose, glucose. We could try all kinds of things, and we will soon. We have undergraduates who are coming back from spring break this week, and we're going to get them to work in the lab uh, making different sugar solutions and seeing what the kind of performance we get out of each. But we do need a baseline performance, something that we can use as a, as a comparison for all the future data. So this week, I've tried to make a YouTube for YouTube a salt bridge uh, in the classical galvanic salt style. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this little cut pasture pipette and this flame right here and I'm going to attempt to blow a U-tube by carefully bending this into a U-shape. We'll see how that goes. So after quite some time I got mm, not exactly a full U but eh think it'll hold. We'll go forward from there. But I'm not done yet. I will be next week. I'll show the, the example and the performance of the iron cell in the two beaker format. And then we'll start making pouch cells and I'll go through that process again as well. The other thing that's been on my mind is the question of using this kind of chemistry for a flow battery. Now flow batteries are, are an interesting idea. I made a, a video about them specifically, a link in the description. But would this be a great flow battery? And I think it could be if the limiting factor ends up being how much iron we can fit into the catholite, maybe the solution is to keep the catholite outside of the cell and pump it through in order to get more energy capacity by way of a large tank and more power capacity by way of a larger membrane. Decoupling those may have some engineering advantages. So if you like that kind of thing, tune in every week. We talk about progress in the all-iron battery every week right here in the Outlab.